Okay, here's a different video. 10 tips on getting a astrology reading. I'm a Vedic astrologer, but I think that this will also hold true for the most part for Western and other traditions of astrology. Um, but yeah, it occurred to me that, you know, there's probably a lot of you guys who have had readings, some that have gone well, some that have gone bad. Um, how should one really go about getting readings? Because I can tell you that the way that people approach me has a lot to do with whether I want to work with them or not at all and how it's going to go. So tip number one, and this is actually kind of like the overall thesis for what I'm trying to say. Astrology is known as Deva Prajna. It is not called, it is Jyotish is the name of astrology when in terms of the science and the math, but astrology is called Deva Prajna when you actually go and get a reading from me or someone. The reader is Prajna questioning, consulting the devas, the gods on your behalf. So astrology is really just consulting the gods. You're hiring me or someone to consult the gods on your behalf. So you want to treat it that way. Uh, so it is not point number one. It's called con consulting the gods, not controlling the gods. And you don't want to control your astrologer either. Okay, so that's the main point of this whole thing, but that's point number one. Consult the gods, but don't try to control them and treat the astrologer as a conduit of that. So respectfully. Number two. In ancient times, you had to give an offering to the reader, like a cow or some gold or some milk or some clothing or rice or something. And then the reader was still being paid by the king. So every Vedic astrologer, is like, this is the thing is that Indians, a lot of like Indian people growing up in India, I get it, like astrology should be free is kind of how they see it. And in their culture, it was sort of, it, in ancient times, it it was set up that way. And that's what I'm explaining. So they have this like, kind of like, oh, we shouldn't have to pay for it. So they'll always just ask you endless questions on YouTube. I have this in this placement, tell me my life story right now. And, um, or, you know, just get constantly, not everyone, but I'm just saying that there's kind of, in the West, people kind of know you, you can't get anything for free and you have to pay. But in uh, Indian culture, they're is a little bit of a mix up there. And so I'm just trying to convey this to you guys that Americans aren't trying to be greedy and take your money if you're an Indian astrologer, but they're just also not gonna get taken advantage of either. And if they just sit there and answer free questions for people online all day long, they're gonna get taken advantage of and be hungry and broken. I have done that. I have been that person. And a guy like me, just as soon as I go on Facebook, I'll have like 20 messages from random strangers asking me for free advice basically. So no, at a certain point, you just have to cut that off, right? Um, and that's the thing is that you guys maybe don't realize, but in ancient times, a Vedic astrologer was getting paid twice for every single reading they were doing. They were getting paid right then and there with an offering that may not have been much, like could have been a cow one day, which would be the equivalent of like 20,000, or it would have been like maybe a little bit of rice or just a meal or, a mil or milk or something or gold, or like I said, clothing. Uh, all kinds of things, a horse, a ox, a cart, um, a tool. Um, but at the same time, the king was still paying them. So that's why they didn't have to pressure a client or anything about money because they were still getting paid by the king a huge amount. And we're talking big amounts. In the old days, uh, an astrologer, a court astrologer for a king would make about the equivalent of a Supreme Court justice, what a Supreme Court justice makes in the United States today, about $275,000 a year. So no, I'm not wrong for, for needing to get my needs met. And that's exactly, I mean, that would be a nice amount of money for me to make every year that wouldn't even be enough to cover a lot of the learning and expenses that I've had to spend to do this. So yeah, it just gets kind of old. You know what I mean? Like being struggling over here and doing our best as astrologers to make it and present and create free content and then just get criticized and stuff for like not, yeah, like for charging too much or something. Like I teach this ridiculously cheap astrology courses, um, two hours of free content for like $25. And I've had a number of people be like, oh, your course is too much or this or that. Uh, you just don't recognize value. I'm sorry. And that's funny because it's a course on financial astrology. So yeah, if you need that course, you probably don't recognize value very well or you wouldn't need that course so bad. Um, 
But uh, so I hope that number two point is very clear. Like you don't ask for free stuff and recognize that you get what you pay for in life. And in the old days, the astrologers were getting paid a lot and doing good jobs. And they were serious astrologers too. Like you could, if you blew it in that court, you could be, you know, you could be put to death even. So, so yeah, we also, I guess, don't have it to be that serious now, but it just needs to be understood. Um, and it would be really nice if astrologers could start making more money, like equivalent to, you know, a justice, Supreme Court justice does or something. Um, number three. Uh, now, before I go to number three, it is funny, uh, Ronald Reagan, he had an astrologer actually all throughout the 80s, Joan Quigley, and they were paying about $3,000 a week to her. So that's kind of um, one example of how these things have happened in modern days as well. <clears throat> okay, so number three. Um, this kind of goes in with the other two, but you know, astrology is a divine science. So you never want to try to hustle your astrologer on any way. And again, this deals with not controlling them, but being focused on gratitude and adaptability and receptivity. You know, if I go to an astrologer and the Indian, an old fashioned Indian astrologer is hanging out, I'm going to be like, dude, all right, when do you want me? Like, he's like, okay, come back later. Okay, I come back later. Like, I'm not going to hassle them about it. Oh, I don't want to read your chart today. Cool. I must not have meant to be having it read. Go do another thing. And the clients that react, that work with me like that always get the best responses. You know, I've had to get readings from great astrologers that you guys would know if I mentioned their names and they've been like, yeah, my mind's not right today. Let's do it again. Cool. Not going to push it. You know what I mean? Had that happened so many times that I'm comfortable enough to where I can say that too now. And I know there's nothing wrong with that. You want an astrologer who's alive and flexible and is like a functioning, healthy human and um, can just honestly tell you, yeah, my mind's not right today. Let's do it another day, you know? So um, there has to be an element of trust and flexibility there is kind of what point three is about. Point number four, taking that further, don't expect your astrologer to do your reading around your schedule or on a weekend or because you work during the week. This is the most frustrating thing I have to deal with is that as people will hire me and then treat me as though I'm not a, a professional advisor. Would you expect your doctor? Would you tell your doctor in the email like, oh, I can only do the reading. I can only meet with you on Saturdays and Sundays on your days off. No, you would just suck it up and take that doctor's appointments whenever he has an availability or you would suck it up and die with your freaking ailment. You know what I mean? You're the one who's needing them. I don't need you. You need me if you're hiring me. So you need to recognize that hierarchy and be respectful and just understand that, no, you're gonna work on my schedule. I'm not gonna work around your schedule. Think about how frustrating that is for an astrologer to work, to have to have regular nine to five hours and then yet every single person they consult wants them to work on Saturday or Sunday only when they're off or on outside of that at like six o'clock in the evenings or something like that. Come on, people, show respect. Again, if you show respect to the gods, they will recognize that and you will immediately, even before your readings even happen, you'll get good results. Um, so yeah, treat them like you would treat a doctor, treat them like you would treat going to get surgery, a marriage counselor, any other important meeting. And, um, or as you would treat going to a priest or just, you know, like, again, don't try to control them. Don't try to be the boss. Their astrologers are not Walmart. You don't get to just like push on them like that. You know what I mean? Um, Cause they'll just say no, or you'll just get a bad reading. And if they're a really good astrologer, I mean, astrologers are people who are experts on the occult. You really don't want them on your bad side, dude. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Um, you want them on your good side. Uh, and that's what all that's about. Um, so, then this goes to uh, point number five. Always read the policy on the astrologer's site before you get a reading and thoroughly and make sure that you are able to follow their protocol. Um, and again, you have to do this just like you would follow any doctor or any government thing that you sign waivers and forms and all these things and you're legally bound to follow that. Well, I don't even push people that hard. I don't even make them do all that stuff. And so they should, you I wish they would appreciate that, right? And a lot of them do, but just 
that last Mercury retrograde was not very fun for dealing with clients for me. So that's what gave me the idea to write this and say some of this stuff. Um, because yeah, that's the funny thing is when the astrology is bad and you're having a rough time and you're venting to your astrologer, chances are there's a lot of other people having a rough time that are also venting to him at that time. So be keeping that in mind. So you always want to read their policy. Um, for example, I don't give refunds. If you ever request a reading from me and you ever want to get a reading, you have to know that. It, the moment you pay me, you are tithing. You are paying the gods. You gave that money to, to the church to a tithing. You're not getting it back ever. Just don't get a reading from me if that's an issue for you. Just don't. But if you want a reading, yeah, the moment I have to email you, that already costs me time and money. So if it's not paid for, then my energy is not on the table then. You know what I mean? At the moment the, the, the reading is paid for, I'm invested energetically, but I'm not till then. So people can, email. that's the other thing is um, if you want to, oh, we're going to get to that in a moment, actually. That's the next one. So I'll let, let that go. But each astrologer is different. Others might want to give you refunds. They might be suckers or, you know, young and hungry enough to where they'll write with you for hours and then you change your mind and then they get nothing in return because you want a refund. If they want to be suckers like that, that's fine, but I'm not. So you have to read my policy. You know what I mean? Um, and again, in my policy, I have to be paid certain ways just because people request too many goddamn refunds. You know what I mean? When I've already done hours of work or spent a lot of time emailing with them that I can't get back. And so that's why I have to be paid certain ways why I like to be paid in crypto or through a bank transfer, other things, because PayPal won't honor they don't really, yeah, they're just, a, they're just a poor company. I don't really like them anymore. And they're not very good about small businesses, about people like me. Um, so yeah, if you're looking to be an astrologer, I would say look for things away from PayPal too, just as a tip, if you're, if you're for those of you guys who are astrologers, because <clears throat> they won't honor your policies about anything. <clears throat> now this is <clears throat> point number six. Keep your email concise and clear. The first email, like after, you know, the first introductory email, try to keep it, you know, just well organized, not a lot of typos. Uh, of course, if you're like, you know, if English isn't your first language, it's fine. I'll understand. But I'm just trying to say, keep it like clear. So it's not uh, just this wall of stuff I have to read. People will send me their first email and just tell me their whole life story just on and on and on. I'm like, okay, go to the next email because I just don't have time to do that. When there's another person who has an email ready and concise and you know ready to have a reading so yeah know and expect the reader might have to go through 20 emails that day and let's try to keep it to the point what you like to get give your birth info you know what you want to know what you're willing to pay or if you already know what reading just tell them that etc um and, uh, you know, I'll, you know, the reader, again, it's a hierarchy. They will reply back to you and be super busy and I'll have be filled with typos. Yeah, I can get this to you whenever I go. And then, you, you know, again, deal with that. That's fine. But when you write them back, try to be, con be clear, be concise, because that's what really matters, right? Um, if they don't have the right understanding of what you want, then, then, then you can't possibly give you a good reading. Um, and then number seven, this kind of goes along with the email, but when you're sharing your birth info, always make sure you share it to the person in the way that like their, their nationality would read it. So you have to understand Americans, we see, we read the dates with the month first and then the day and then the year. So today is July 20th, 2021. So we write 7, 20, 2021. If it was like 7, 10, yeah, if it was 7, 10, 21, I'd write it that way. But then in, if you're in pretty much anywhere else in the world, you'd write it 10, 7, 21. I'm not going to know that. Do you think I'm just going to know which way you meant? No, of course. I'm an American. Write it to me in the American way or write it out just to make sure there's no questions. So like July 10th, 2021, write, writing it out in English. Again, it's just a matter of assumptions. You know, people just make, they assume too much, you know, and they assume that what I'm just gonna like know what country and nationality you're, you're working with there. And people have done readings wrong like that tons of times. Um, and I've done this wrong for someone before when they gave me the wrong info. And I didn't think that was really my fault, you know? 
um, they were the ones that knew where I was at. I didn't even know what country they were in. Um, number eight. Um, yeah, that's actually, a, a, to add to number seven, um, you know, the astrologer is the one who's in a fixed time zone. So when you're talking about times and scheduling, always, always talk within their time zone. Like it's so arrogant and so, er so, so arrogant kind of to me to talk to me in the, in your time zone, as if I'm just supposed to keep track of all my clients and all their different time zones. You know, again, just make it easy for the astrologer and you'll be their best friend because we want to do readings. We're sitting here. I'm taking this free time, this free hour out of my morning <clears throat> on Tuesday to talk to you guys to make this work better because I love to do readings. I love to do my job. I love it. And I just want to streamline that more so that everyone gets the best possible result and not have to deal with just these annoying, tedious things that happen. <clears throat> So then number eight is assume a good waiting period for your astrologer. You know, a very skilled astrologer will have naturally a minimum of probably two month wait time, usually up to six months if they're a really good astrologer. I've got a two to six month wait time since for years now. And um, just assume that's going to be the case. You know, a good marriage counselor will be usually booked up about six months out from what I've understood. Um accountants, advisors, all kinds of people, good dentists. It was hard to get a book, a book, a meeting with my dentist. It took like, you know, months. So, and he was a good dentist, you know, is what, that's all I'm trying to say is just, you just have to assume that don't expect an astrologer to be like the equivalent of an emergency room. Oh, you just call them up immediately. Unless you've got me on a retainer. No, you're not going to be able to do that. If you have hired me for a retainer, then you can, but again, the, the relationship you have with the astrologer is what's crucial. And that's kind of another point that <clears throat> I didn't really write down a number here, but uh, you <coughs> you really get like, you get what you pay for in life, in astrology. And, you know, people just think they can just get one reading and just know everything there is to know. I'm sorry. You really think that's how it goes? You think like going to a guru, they're just going to tell you everything the first time? No, like it's about building a relationship. I mean, you could have so many readings before I ran out of things to talk about in your chart, you know? And uh, it comes down to what's your, how far you want to go really. Um, number nine, be very careful of the astrologers you're hiring when you're going based on just marketing and self-promotion and social media and not really any bearing or understanding of their skill. So it's much better to get a recommendation from someone who's had a really good astrology reading, a referral from a friend who's like, I know I went to this person, had an amazing reading. I think that's a lot better to go off of than to just go on the internet and to just type in like astrology and get a kook like me or someone, you know what I mean? I'm just get random people to hire to work with, you're going to get random results, you know, and astrology is a field where it does not require any sort of degree or qualification. So anyone can just go and be like, oh, man, I'm really good at marketing, but I'm a terrible counselor, but I could go be a healer in some field, astrology, tarot, Reiki, uh, life coaching, you know, go, you know, you watch these YouTube ads that come on, they're just like, I made $10,000 in five minutes, and I can teach you how to do it. And it's just all this marketing nonsense. And there's that, that's going on in the astrology world too. Um, and there are archetypal reasons why the best astrologers will actually be the least marketing focused because the planets that make you a great astrologer actually can get hurt by the planets of marketing and the merchant thing. Um, for example, Venus, her enemy is the moon, which is a merchant, a marketer. Venus is an astrologer. Jupiter is also astrologer. His enemy is Mercury, which is the other marketer. Um, so if you have a strong marketing focus, actually that's almost disqualifying you from being good, from saying that your chart also has a great counseling focus because it's can, if you know the Avashtas, you know that sometimes you can only have one or the other. Um, that's getting off into technical astrology, so I'll let that go, but those of you who've studied the Avashtas of Jupiter and how he's starred by Mercury and things like that, just contemplate that in the context of marketing. Um, 
Now, number 10. This is a really good one, you guys. Saved it for the last. Don't order readings on behalf of other people. Just don't do it. I don't allow this anymore and you shouldn't. And if there's a newer astrologer, just spare them the trouble, okay? Why is this trouble? Because if the person really needed the reading and was meant to have it, they'll pay for it. You can hand them the cash. These days you can transfer it, you can Venmo it to them, have them pay for it. Have them karmically sign off on it. There's a problem. There's a free will principle involved in astrology. And when you when a person tries to get me to do a reading for someone else who didn't really consciously directly request it, there's something blocking, there's something in the way. The person's free will didn't fully sign off on it. And so I can't do what I'm supposed to be able to do normally. There's something in the way, or I'll just tell you that they just don't get great results. You know, the only result, the only readings I've done that have been bad in the last uh, like three years have been readings that people had, oh, I want you to get a reading for this guy. And he's just like this the whole time. Oh, or, or, you know, and it's just like, all right, that's a waste of my energy. I don't want to do that. You know, I don't want to work with that. Um, so you don't do that. Just give your friend or the person you want to get to that reading, just give them the money and then let them handle it or just ask them like will you or won't you and then if they're honest with you they will just hand the money back if they don't want it but we have enough to do aside already as astrologers aside from tracking down the client and like they'll be like oh here's his email and get send him the read no no you just send them to me again don't make us do all this hunting of people of strangers you know so no we don't want to track down clients we don't want to find what emails to write them uh, would you do that to a doctor? Again, would you go to a doctor? Hey, I really want you to check out my friend. They're not really interested. I want you to chase them down and go to their house and find their email. Right? And, well, come on, seriously? Like, no, the doctor would laugh at that. He'd be like, <laughs> they'll come to me when they're ready, you know, or they're going to lay in bed and vomit some more. But uh, yeah, you just, again, it's just about like a matter of respect that you just wouldn't do these things um, in other fields. But people just treat astrology poorly, I guess, because it's an eighth house profession. Um, so you don't hire a doctor on behalf of your friend who is sad. You tell them to get their ass to the doctor and do the same thing with an astrologer or any other healer, uh, you know, massage there. Well, can't do that without, but you, you know what I'm saying? Just do that in, in a general context with approaching wellness professionals. Wellness professionals are doing the best job right now and are getting kind of shit on the most. That's why I wanted to point this out too. Like allopathic procedures are, you know, uh, the number three cause of death in the in on this country is iatrogenics or basically doctors intervening and causing you to die. Like actual mainstream medical practice is the number three cause of death in this country. Wellness practitioners are not. And you'll read things on the media like, oh, the one time a wellness person acts, the one time a wellness practitioner like accidentally harms someone, you'll hear about it in the media because the media is very, very threatened by the wellness world because they're owned by big pharma. But I just have to say these things, you know, like give your wellness guys as much love and support as possible right now because, well, because that's who you want to build your relationships with. And because they're the underdogs, you know what I mean? So anyways, I hope you guys appreciate this. Uh, to recap, just, you know, consult the gods. Don't control them. The gods are not fans of cowards. Don't ask your astrologer, okay, I want to know about love, but not about this. I don't want to know when I'm going to die. I want to know this and I don't want to know that. And blah, blah, blah. Again, you're being a coward, okay? Just don't go to the astrologer if that's how you want to be either suck it up and just go to them and get what you want to get or get what God want you to get really because that's what's happening again the gods are just going to tell you what you need to hear oftentimes it's not even what you asked and be so grateful for that really like because when that's happened for me good God it's been the best saving grace of my life right and I would never want to uh risk being disrespectful or or anything like that so that's why I wanted to convey this to you guys have courage um and, you know, like, yeah, like when you pay for reading, pay, treat us charity. I'm just throwing that. I don't know what's going to come from it. Pray to God, meditate before the reading, and then just see what happens, you know? So the more you put into it, the more you get out, you know? And I hope, all right. So I hope you guys appreciate this and I hope it helps.
someone somewhere.